sometimes we need to look at the numerical approach or you know attacking problems by looking at specific values and oftentimes a table is a great way to get a new perspective on a problem situation so we're going to look at how to do that and better yet how to do it efficiently and uh, and wisely so i've got a few examples to highlight the different functions of the table so let's say we've got this particular uh, car rental place and the cost of renting this super fancy car depends on the number of hours it's used. Um, for this particular one, we'll notice that it actually gets more expensive as time goes on, okay? So each hour costs more and more. But regardless, let's say we have this model, we wanna set up a table to display the costs since it's not standard or it doesn't go up by equal increments. So we can maybe display to our unique customers the situation. So what we do is we start off by plugging this into our Y1, okay, using X for input. So enter this in here, and then before we go jumping to the table, you're gonna wanna use the table set function. So that's second window to get to table set. And so I'm gonna explain what each of the three of these things mean. So table start means where are we starting the table's values. Um, so, you know, for, and this would be for the independent variable. So we might say, you know, for one hour is where we'd start it because we're looking to set up the display for hours one to eight. So that's each hour. So this delta means change. So the change in the table means uh, we want to change it by one hour. So start at one and then keep adding one and tell me how that goes. Um, and then we'll set this to auto to automatically generate this table. So independent means input variable. Automatically populate these changing like this and dependent, you can also uh, just answer to these inputs. And so we'll see how that looks. All right, and so what we see is I've got my inputs. So hour one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then my outputs, the cost of renting the car. And we can scroll down to eight. And if you're interested, you can keep going, but um, our qu question asked for just hours one to eight. So we can copy these down and generate that table. Not too bad. So that's example one, just generating a table the way you wanted it to. Now, a way you could change this would be, let's say I wanted it to be every two hours. Um, every, for every two hours of use for hour two, up to eight. Then we're going to change how the table's set up. We'd come up here and say, oh, I still want to start. Well, we want to start at two. And we're going to go up by two hours. And then see how that changes the, uh, the table. So here we go. Hour two, four, six, eight. So we're advancing this more quickly and seeing what costs go with it. All right. And so you can do this for, you know, any setup. If you wanted to start at hour two, but then go up by eight hour increments, two, 10, 18, 26 on the left-hand side. So hopefully that's making sense. This is how we use table set to start the uh, table input point and then how to generate each row from there. And now to answer our second question, it's a little bit different. So we have three specific values we're interested in, 24, 48, 72 hours. Let's say I'm a customer and I wanted to know at these, you know, a one day, two day, three day rental, how much does it cost? So in table set, these two actually become um, less important because what we're gonna do is say, well, if I'm only interested in these three values and they're so far apart, I'm gonna say, ask me what the input is and, you'll t and I'll tell you what the output is. So we'll come to the table and it will be blank. And so don't be confused here, it's waiting for you to input the number of hours. So let's say for 24 hours, it's going to cost $481 for 48 hours. It's going to be 1129 and for 72 hours it'll be 1969. Okay? It's getting expensive quick. Um but this is the idea in displaying kind of on demand the input and output pairs that you're interested in. And then the last part here for example number 3, you're looking for a uh given input, are we looking for an input given the output? So we know $500 is the cost, so that'd be our Y1. 
and we're looking for the corresponding input. Now there's no way to do this automatically in the table to ask for when we're at 500, uh, what is the associated X input. So what we can do is a couple things. One, if you really want to use the table, you can use a little guess and check since it's in ask mode. Say, hey, I'm close to it with uh, 24 hours. Let's see what 25 hours gets me. Okay, so I'm actually over 500. So now it's a matter of maybe inching a little bit closer here and there by doing some guess and check. Depending on your degree of accuracy you need um, and how much you know time this would take, it might be worth it to actually go back to the plot of this graph, do a standard uh, zoom, and then you know set the window up here to include your maximum value. And like we've done in the other videos before, if this looks new, you should check out the intersection video. Um, plug in 500 and see where they intersect. Oh, we need to increase our um, X window as well. So yes, we need to up, up this up to say 28. And then we'll be able to find that intersection. To get a little bit more accurate, 24.82 hours. Okay, obviously this is a little bit of a silly example at this point, but the idea is just to illustrate these different features for when you need them. Okay, so we are able to now display a table automatically or by using the input values we've selected um, and just display those rows. So I hope that was helpful.